We are at the next location. Well, we're not quite there yet. We've, uh, we're hiding under brollies. I know we've got waterproofs on, but it just means I can have my head down because it's so muggy and close. And Mrs. C is behind somewhere there. She's got her brolly on and a waterproof jacket. She's just getting her air up at the moment. She's having hot flushes. She's having hot flushes today. I don't know why, but she is. Um, but yeah, uh, we're going for a bit of a walk. I've parked outside the gate. I mean, I can get under the barrier, but it's three quid to park down here. So and I thought to myself, well, what's the point of spending three quid? I might as well park down there and walk. It'd do me good as well. Uh, I'll save me money for the rest of the week. So we're going to head down and I'll show you what it is we're going to photograph once I can find it. And then I'll finish the video off down there. I just want to get one or two quick shots of it. It's not going to be the perfect conditions because it's raining and I want it nice and dry and bone and crispy. And I'll show you the image in the guidebook and that's the reason why, because I really like the image in the guidebook. So I'm not going to get that, but it's definitely one to remember for the future. You never know, we might be down this way again and we can head back again. So I'll speak to you once you actually get there. Cool, they are a bit sharp. Woo. So we've managed to strip off our coats and put the umbrellas away because it's just got humid and muggy. It is so warm, it's horrible. It could do with a real good storm, to be honest, to break it up. Now the tide is out, I can see the sea, I can see the shore or whatever. You've got these weird little pool, you know, water inlets. You've got one this side and you've got one the other side and they, they stretch right along and I'll put a picture of Google Maps up for you, which is how I know how to get here because I checked the, uh, I checked the location, I checked on Google Maps, worked, worked out from where we parked and where I'd have to walk to to get here. Now there's more than one thing to shoot, but I'm not sure of it. In fact, yeah, now I'm getting closer to the edge of the sea. There is, there's probably a few other little things I can shoot rather than just the one. So I will try and get a couple of other shots and they're gonna be sort of um, textury sort of lines and yeah, stuff like that. So I'm gonna flick you around, I'm gonna show you what's here and I can see what I've come to see. I can see it from here, so I know I'm in the right place. We're now on the shoreline. This is obviously the sea defense. Now all this lot down this end is all subject to flooding apparently, but this is the mud flax. And there is no chance I am going out on that because I don't think you survive one moment out there. But you've got all these little pockets of water and these little inlets and little lines and stripes. So if we can find some interesting ones, now there's some people right out there by the boats. So that's a bit still, that's a beach up that end. So if I can find a couple of little inlets, I'll get a shot of that. If it does stay off the rain, I will get the drone out and buzz it along because I think there's going to be a couple of cracking little drone photographs along here because you can get the elevation to see the lines in the in the mud and see these patterns because these patterns look brilliant but you need to be that higher to get them so I think it's definitely a drone shot. So let's get down to this first part, get the first shot done that I come for and uh, then we'll make our way back along. Oh, it's just started raining again so Maybe just put the brolly up. But you can see now, this is what I've got excited about. Is I like all these cracks in the mud and all the shapes it makes. Now, I can't walk out on there, obviously, because it is mud flax and I'm not taking the risk of getting myself covered in mud or even stuck or worse, drowned when the tide comes in. But I am looking at these and these mud pools. Now, I'm thinking the drone's going to be amazing when I can get the drone over them, but there's still shots here. I still like this. You know this mud pool and this one here is absolutely fantastic and there's even a leading line in front of it and i haven't even got to the it's actually a jetty i'm going to i'll tell you what it is it's a jetty but this here this here is awesome so i think i'm going to start here take a photograph of this with these little s's in it leading out into the abyss and you've even got a little tiny bit of wood sticking up so i think there's going to be a couple of shots just here and i might take them before the rain carries on because i do like this this looks really cool. This is where photography is quite difficult and quite hard to do because it's raining and trying to keep the water off the lens. But lucky enough, Mrs. C's yeah. with me and she's got the umbrellas up, so she's holding it. Uh, I've got a composition set up at the moment. Uh, the composition is something along the lines of uh, this little groin type thing leading out to these puddles just out there, these little muddy puddles. Uh, I'm not sure how awesome of a photograph it is, um, but it's a start for me for the moment. Uh, I quite like it, to be honest. I've got the, the horizon on the thirds. It's just gray. It's a very gray, very bland colored image. There's no color in it whatsoever, but I quite like it. And post-processing might tell, you know, might make it look a bit different. 
Uh, always post-processing makes the images, you know, fastly different to what they are here. Uh, I sort of do quite a little, a lot with them if I can to make them stand out. So I'm going to keep my lens cap on just to keep the uh, water off it. I'm going to edge across a little bit to the right and try and get like a minimal sort of just a bit of a, an S shape in the water. So I'll get that one. I'll put the two of them up. Let me know what you think and uh, I'll see if I can find another one. Looks a bit favourable, a bit further on that way. Okay, so we have a situation at hand between us and the jetty that I want to photograph. There's about a hundred geese. Now, I'm sure they're all going to shift as we get closer, but look at them all. Look, look at all these geese that we've got to make our way through. Now, it just takes one ratty geese or goose to get upset and I'm in trouble. <laughs> But that's where we're going. We're going to head over that way. I've been shooting these uh, rock pools, or not rock pools, but these mud flat pools. And I think I've just shown you a couple of really nice ones. So I'm hoping that, <laughs> I'm hoping that these geese aren't going to give me any trouble. Now they are walking away, but you know, safety in numbers and all that. And there's only two of us and there's about a hundred of them. So let's see what happens. It turns out that they're more worried about me than I was about them. <laughs> a lot of them flew off, they've gone further down the beach and the others have wandered over onto the beach. So all good, all good, no attacking me. I did have once, one place once that we got seriously attacked by a goose. Um, I think it was protecting a nest or something. It was on a pontoon. It wasn't even on nature. It was on an actual man-made building structure. And it came over and it gave me some serious hassle and I had to flick its beak to get it to leave us alone because it was going out of something chronic. So yeah, be warned, they can be nasty little buggers if they want to be. Now I can see me jetty, it's looking pretty cool. Uh, there's some more wood on top of it from the photograph I've seen, which is a bit, uh, not upsetting, but it's a bit messy. And the mud that I could see around the edge of it in the photograph, which is absolutely amazing. And like I say, I'll put it up on the screen for you and I'll try and find the gentleman's name or lady's name that took it to give them some uh, credit. But yeah, this is not quite the same, but it's still gonna be a nice shot. It's still interesting. And it's got a mega wicked gray sky. So let's see if we can make something of it. But here's the structure. And that is what I'm here to have a bit of a play with. So let's see if I can do something with this. Let's see if I can make something out of this. There's a lot of green around it, which wasn't in the image. But this is what I wanna try and make something out of. Let's see what we can do with this. So I am set up. I have got my first shot lined up. It's really difficult. My tripod, I'm not using my Benroom. I've got my Sunway photo and it's just about a foot too short. I could do it being a, a slightly high. Now I might hold the camera up in the air. I've done this before. I hold the camera up in the air, put the ISO up a little bit higher and just take a shot higher up. I want to keep the top of the wood off the horizon if I can. Um, I will go lower. I'm going to definitely shoot lower, but at the moment I've got this, this nice little line um let's see if i'm going to show you i'll tell you what I'll, I'll put the camera on i'll put the camera on to video and i can show you exactly what i've got right so the camera's on video now so bear in mind it's slightly wider and you can see the bottom of the image down here but i've got these nice little lines coming in down the bottom with the nice greens but you can see there it's just clipping the horizon so i can do it being up a lot higher and maybe if i lift the camera up right up in the air you can probably see that i can get away with it there so whether i lift the camera up in the air and take a shot holding it up in the air and just see if i can get it as sharp as i can um maybe that'll work but yeah i think i think it'll probably be okay it's just a case of uh just just getting these lines i like these lines but in the image up before i didn't have any lines and i'm going to shoot inside it and shoot down it as well so yeah not not a not a bad position to start with uh, just, just needs a little bit of improvement. I think, actually, I think if I go high enough, 
if, if I lift my ISO up, let's take my ISO up to say 400. I'm going to go crazy. Let's take my ISO up to 800 to get this shot. I'm going to focus on the foreground and I'm going to lift the camera up in the air. I've got a two second time. So if I put it on 10 seconds and I'm going to lift the camera up in the air on the tripod and hold it up and hold it as steady as I can and wait for the 10 second count. And see how that turns out. Uh, I'll have a quick preview. I'll have a little look and see what it looks like. It's definitely where I need to be. It's definitely, definitely where I need to be is up there. Now, how sharp I can hold it or how good I can get the composition, I don't know. But let's go one more. Let's go a little bit further back maybe and try again. So 10 second timer's on. I'm going to hold it up in the air. Keep it steady as I can. Keep all the grasses in the foreground. Oh. There we go. Let's try one of a slightly lesser ISO because it would be nicer if we can. Let's go down to 320 and we do the same thing again. Hold it up in the air. I just need to get that horizon away. Keep me leading lines if I can. Looking at the screen, I can see the screen. Count down, steady. Oh. <laughs> Let's see if we manage to get that. I'm sure it's going to be fine. But it's a much, much better shot by being higher up definitely a much better shot yeah I like that that's good in fact that's really good I do like that right camera back on two second timer and we need to get another composition set up Got another one set up uh, again this is going to cause me an issue so the first one polarizer is on because it makes a lot of difference because it's cutting through the little glare of the pool of water around the stump but i've got this one i'm going to show you this shot i'll take this shot now this is up a little bit closer i've got these nice cracks of pools in the pool of water and i've got the stumps and i'm looking through it what i want to do though again i'm going to tilt my screen down i think i want to be looking down on it like that so I'm going to go 10 second timer again. I'm going to hold the tripod up in the air, focus on that stump. I'm going to hold the tripod up in the air and hope I can get the shot I want. I've got a lead in line. I've got a lead in line and a little pool of water. And what I haven't done is put my ISO back up to 160 or back down to 160 when I was on the tripod. but. I'm going to go again. I'm going to lift my ISO up slightly. I don't mind if this is a bit grainy. I'd rather it a bit grainy. I'm even going to go up to 640. I'm going to take the same again. Lift my camera up in the air. I'm going to balance it as steady as I can. Hold it in place. Rest it against my arm. Wait for the timer. And I always hold my breath just before it takes, just to see if I can keep it still as possible. And I'm going to one more. I'm going to try and step back without stepping on the mud. One more, try and keep the rock pool in. Right, I think, I think, I think, I think I've got it. Let me just check the back of the camera. Yeah, I like that. It definitely looks better higher up. Definitely, definitely looks better higher up. God, you really do need a big tripod. I know I'm probably a little bit close to you, Woo um, but we've got another shot and this is probably the final one and I am going to get my drone out and have a quick play because it definitely deserves a drone shot this. Um, I have come down a little lower. I'm now shooting right down in the middle. I'm looking right the way down the old jetty 
and I've got the pillars centralized and I'm just looking all the way through it with these grass at the bottom. What I am going to do, I'm just going to take one more. I know I always say the last one, the last one, and there's always one more. But the reason being is I've got horizontal and vertical and there's two different shots. And I'm going to put them both up on the screen, one after the other. And you'll see the reason why, if I can get far enough back without stepping in this mud, because I don't think I can. Let's try this. If I can just get wide enough to get the two pillars in without it clipping the edge of the frame. And I think I've just managed to do it, so we should be all right. If I can just about get the framing, the reason being is there's a, 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 a some broken mud at the bottom, and I think the vertical shot is a lot nicer, and I can focus on this foreground in the vertical shot and have the image leading out. I could put my wide angle on. Um, I'm at 18mm. I could put the wide angle on, but I think it would just distort everything and make all the posts look a bit funny. So I think that will work quite nicely. I could, try even, I could even try a... A higher shot so I put the horizon low and have the sky and mass this massive massive sky in it because the sky is awesome the sky is really good such a dramatic looking sky I think that's amazing let's just try one like that because the sky is really gray and overcast looking so yeah there's a there's a few shots to be had here it'd be nice to get a sunrise or a sunset definitely because I think that would work really really well but that is quite nice. I'm going to take one more and I'm going to call that a wrap for the photos until I get my drone out that is. That's it. That's it. Photos done. Drone time. I'm sure there's many of you suggesting and thinking, God, I hope he's not gonna get his drone up. I've just stood up, just put my camera down, and I just looked at Denise and said, I can't fly my drone here. It's an RSPB reserve. There's birds everywhere, so I can't fly my drone. It's just not the done thing to be doing it. So I'm not gonna get the drone out because I can't. Um, I'm gonna make do with what I've got. And <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna call it the end of it on the video. Yeah. And say goodbye. I Thanks for watching. I will take a couple more maybe while I'm here. Now I'm not going to get the drone out, maybe slightly different angles, and I'll stick them up at the end. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I know it was a part two. It probably ended up quite a long one. You can always fill in with some of mine if you like, because I've got I, some corkers. I can fill in with some of yours, was that? <laughs> she's a cheek. I will put some Denise's pictures in as well. When she's out with me, I normally do, so <laughs> you've got I've a cheek, I've actually done some wide-angle ones through the... Through the um... <laughs> what's left of the whatever it is here, Jetty. with the the path leading in so wide angles you know. mm, really <laughs> competition <Sorry> on <laughs> yeah so yeah thanks for watching please like and subscribe and uh yeah till next time bye uh, no 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 till next time ciao for now, ciao for now. <laughs> <laughs>